Have you heard about the term big objects in Salesforce? Yes. So do you know what big objects are? No. Don't worry, I'll tell you what big objects are. Let's begin. Big object is a new feature in Salesforce and it got released in summer 15 as a pilot feature but now it's available and now let's see that what big objects are used for. So big objects are used to store massive amount of data on Salesforce platform. Yes. So basically what objects are used for in Salesforce. Objects are used to store data into Salesforce. Whereas uh, big objects are used to store massive amount of data in Salesforce. This is all. I mean big objects are used to store massive amount of data. Whereas standard objects or custom objects are used to store uh, data on Salesforce platform which cannot be massive like there is limit on standard and custom objects that you can only store this much amount of uh, records into like standard or custom objects but with big objects you can store massive massive amount of data on the Salesforce platform only this is what the difference is between standard and custom objects and big objects so uh, I mean yeah this this is basically the difference and what I mean by massive amount of data is that you can store 1 million, 100 million or even a billion records in big objects that you cannot do with standard or custom objects. You can store all those records into big objects and those big objects will be in Salesforce platform. So I mean you can do that now with big objects but earlier uh, you used to do that uh, with, ex with the help of external system. You used to store all that information into external system and over there uh, I mean you do whatever you want to do with that data and it was not possible to store that much amount of data into Salesforce but now it is possible with big objects and if you uh, like I mean if you want to use that data then how you will use it so let's see this data in big objects can be used within force.com or by external systems oh yes so uh, the data which is present in big objects the records which are present in big objects can be used within force.com uh, that means you can use all of that data into your apex or uh, whatever you want to do uh, like whatever process you want to use them in or if you want your external applications to use the data which is present into those big objects you can do that with the set of APIs present uh, to access the uh, like to access the records in big objects now let's see that how many type of big objects do we have so big objects are again divided into two further types and that are standard big objects and custom big objects standard big objects are the big objects that are already created by salesforce and are included by uh, like products of salesforce those are called as standard big objects whereas custom big objects are the big objects which you create and uh, like which you create to store the information unique to your org and uh, like whatever new custom big uh, like whatever custom big object you will create in your org that will be considered under custom big object and whatever cust uh, like whatever big object is already there in salesforce and that is created by by salesforce only uh, that comes by default or with the products of uh, salesforce is uh, will be considered as standard big object now let's see that how we'll be able to create a custom big object. So we can create a custom big object using metadata API only. There is no other way to create a custom big object. We cannot create a custom big object like a custom object uh, using point and click. We have to use metadata API only to create a custom big object. And if you want to create a custom big object and if you want to try that how we can create a custom big object and how we'll do all sorts of things there's a link down in the description just hit that link you'll get an implementation guide for uh, like for big objects that how to implement a big object into your org and using that you'll be able to create custom uh, custom big object but some of you might be thinking that why do we need to store that much amount of data in our salesforce platform so there are multiple use cases for big objects that are to store complete customer interaction yes we can store our complete customer interaction uh, with our support executives with our uh, sales executives with our website into big objects we can store all that data into big objects just to get the insights of our uh, i mean support uh, like i mean like uh, how our support is going on and is like our uh, like is i mean how easy it is for our customers to access our website or how easy it is for 
them to uh, contact our support executives and uh, get get their problem resolved as soon as possible to get all the insights but for that you need to store all the interactions so you can do that uh, using big objects and the another uh, i mean use cases to create data archive or data lake so basically if you uh, like if you have any information present in your salesforce but you do not uh, i mean you're not using that information anymore but you still want that information to be present so in that situation you can create a data archive uh, using a big object and store all of that information into that data archive and you can also create a data lake what data lake means is that if you want any information to be available uh, I, I mean if you want any big information to be stored but you don't uh, have any purpose to store it like you want to use it in future or you may use it in future but you don't have any a uh, particular reason to store it right uh, like i mean you don't have uh, a particular process uh, that can use that particular data so in that situation you will create a data lake using big object and the third uh, use case is to audit or track your users salesforce usage if you want to track that uh, like how your employees are working and if you want to track that how much salesforce they are using where they are getting the problems and where they are using it very well and if you want to track and audit all the things related to the salesforce usage of your users you can use big uh, big objects and to like get the insights using that uh, information present on the big objects and the last and the uh, most important point is to perform data analytics big objects can be used uh, like they are basically created to like to help data analytics into salesforce platform and let me explain it to you why uh, for to do data analytics we need big data we need massive amount of data to uh, like predict something or to do sentiment analysis or to do like to do sorts of uh, like i mean lots of things but for that we need a particular storage to store that particular data earlier we used to store all of that information into external system but now with big objects we can use salesforce platform only to store massive amount of data and use that data to do data analytics to get the insights of whatever you want to so basically uh, salesforce is moving towards more of data analytics using big objects uh, and these big objects are based on h base is as far as i know i'm really not sure about it but these big big objects are you uh, like based on h base and uh, these will provide you the way to store massive amount of data which you can use to do data analytics and get insights of whatever you want to do and get answers of the questions of uh, like get the answers of the question which you have related to your business so this is what uh, like this is where we can use big objects in salesforce and now let's see that what important points do we need to remember with big objects let's go before coming to that let's see that how uh, records in big objects are accessed so we have two ways to do that one is socl or soql and another one is async socl that is async soql uh, so we can use socl which we use for uh, which we use to get the records from uh, standard objects and custom objects with big objects also but there is a limitation over there if you want to use socl with big objects then the record set or the data set which is returned by uh, that socl query should be less or should have less records they cannot have many records or millions of millions of records they can have only a particular set of records according to the governal limits only and if you are sure that this socl query will run this much amount of records only uh, then in that situation use socl and the reason that socl works with big objects is uh, if if there is a situation in which you don't want to wait for the results uh, i mean you do, don't want a delay in results you do want the results immediately or you, you want the records uh, right now only if, if you want the records immediately then in that situation you'll use socl but if there are millions of records that you want to fetch or that you want to get then in that situation you'll have to use async socl async socl is created to help manage millions of records in big objects yes in async socl what happens is uh, there are multiple socl queries uh, running in the background when we start a async socl and those queries are fetching the data or getting the data from the big objects and like when they are, when they gets completed into the background uh, we are ready with a complete data set which can contain mil contain millions and millions of records and we have to wait for that to complete so uh, like i mean it's totally up to you when you want to use socl and when you want to use async socl 
if you don't want to wait for the result and have a small data set then just use sockle and if you have uh, like large data set and uh, you can wait uh, for the like i mean you'll have to wait if you have a large data set but you can but i mean you can wait for the data set then in that situation use a sync sockle which will run in the background now let's see that what important points you need to consider with big objects so the first point is you must use metadata api to define a custom big object and field into it okay yes so uh, we like i mean as i've told you earlier also that uh, we can create custom big objects or big objects in salesforce using metadata api only uh, not by using point and click tools and we can create the fields also into it using the metadata api next point is you can create up to 100 big objects per org uh, there's a limit right now that you can create 100 big objects per org and the next point is big objects do not support triggers process flows yes big objects do not support triggers flows uh, and process because like we can store like i mean we can store millions of records over there and in order to scale uh, like scale a database or scale a, like scale a data set or uh, a place where we store the data uh, we need to remove all those things otherwise there will be so much overhead that will go on so these are not supported with big objects and then the next point is big objects can have relationship with standard and custom objects yes big objects can can be related with standard objects and custom objects uh, with a lookup relationship and uh, we can do that to like store the information related to a particular record of a standard object or of a custom object and you can populate them via bulk api or soap api yes uh, so you can create records into uh, big objects using soap api or bulk api and then the last point is big objects are read only after creation yes once you have created a big object with a particular field you cannot add another field or you can mod modify its definition and that's all what you need to know with big objects don't you want to be updated about all new features in salesforce like this one then hit the subscribe button over here right now with the bell icon and if you're watching this video on facebook or on linkedin there's a link down in the description or in the comments just hit that link go to the youtube channel hit the subscribe button to get weekly videos all related to salesforce with the salesforce hulk so see you next week and then bye bye take care